Thank you, Julia, very much. So what is the best way to fix the health care system in the U.S.? That discussion now with Karen Davenport, Director of Health Policy at the Center for American Progress, and Michael Tanner, Director of Health and Welfare Studies at the Cato Institute. Welcome to both of you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, Michael, let me start with you. What's your solution? What would be the best way to fix the system if indeed you think it's broken? Well, the very first thing we need to do is play by the Hippocratic Oath. First, do no harm. We should understand that for all its problems, the U.S. health care system is still the best in the world. That when someone gets really sick, this is the place they come to be treated. That we provide most of the pharmaceuticals that are used worldwide. That we provide most of the medical breakthroughs that are used worldwide. So we need to be very careful that in any reform we make, we don't undermine what makes health care the best in the world. That said, I do think we need to restore consumer control over health care. Whoever controls the dollars controls health care decision making. If that's your insurance company, they get to make the decisions. If it's the government, the government will get to make the decisions. But if we give you back the money and let you and your doctor make the decisions, that's the best of all possible worlds. Okay, let me go to Karen, and I'll, in a minute I'll ask you, Michael, indeed, how to do just that. But Karen, as I understand it, you favor basically a kind of a hybrid mix as a solution to the problems that ail this this particular issue. That's right. What we think is that we have a mix of public programs and public health so that people can afford health care, whether they're very low income people on the Medicaid program or more moderate income people who just need help paying their premiums and create purchasing pools and ways for individuals and companies to be able to buy affordable health insurance, mm -hmm. that that will be the way that we can most practically and most quickly make sure that every American has affordable health coverage. What about that, Michael? Because the system as it stands now, which, which incorporates obviously a lot of private insurers, we still have a record number of Americans that are uninsured. Well, that's true, and we should try to get more people with insurance. But simply giving everyone a piece of paper that says they have health insurance is not the same thing as giving them access to health care. National health care systems around the world claim they're giving people universal coverage, but there are 850,000 people awaiting interest to the National Health Services hospitals in Britain, 800,000 people on the waiting list for health care in Canada. So what we really need to do is ensure that people have access to care, mm -hmm. and that comes from getting other procedures right, deregulating the health care industry, deregulating insurance so that young people can buy low-cost, bare-bones policies, giving people back their money through things like health savings accounts so that people are in control of their own health care decision-making. Karen, what about the issue that, that Michael just cited, that some of the programs well-intentioned in other countries um, work in some cases, but there are, there are problems with those? Do you favor a, a system that would model those particular uh, countries, like, like England and like Canada, or something completely different? Well, we're not advocating a single-payer health care system like they have in England. We're saying that we want to see a meld of private insurance backed up with public insurance programs that help people get coverage. But I would say that countries like Canada and England, uh, the United Kingdom, have much better health care outcomes than we do. And the United States, in fact, doesn't have the best health care in the world. We have the 37th best health care in the world. Mm -hmm. And we see um, higher rates of infant mortality, lower life expectancy in the United States than in a lot of other countries. I think that's an area where we can do better. Certainly having everybody have health insurance is one of the ways that we can do better. But, but, most, but also figuring experts... out how people get the right care at the right time and what treatments are most effective. Mm -hmm. And having that kind of comparative effectiveness information is going to be important. But mo most experts would say that things like life expectancy are not a good measure of health care systems. There's too many exogenous about, factors that infant, come in. What about infant or, mortality? Or infant mortality, uh, abortion rates, uh, whether or not you try to save low birth weight babies or not, those things come into measuring that. But if you measure any specific disease, for example, take prostate cancer. One out of every five Americans who's diagnosed with prostate cancer will die from the disease, but over 57% of Britons who are diagnosed with it will die from it. 25% of Canadians, the same is true of colon cancer, breast cancer, AIDS, heart disease, almost any disease you can find, you're much better off being in the United States if you're sick than anywhere else in the world. Thank you both. We appreciate it. Pleasure to have you here. We'll see how it all plays out. Thank you. We're coming up